When we use Snowflake notebooks for exploratory or interactive analysis work, we want to refer the result of a SQL type cell as data frame without recomputing. So the SQL data can be further processed and that's what we will learn in this video. We will explore whether Snowflake notebook supports converting SQL cell result into a pandas data frame or snowpark data frames along with other limitations. So stay tuned until the end of this video to learn everything about Snowflake Notebook reference cell feature. We have already covered the basic notebook feature in detail in the first chapter. If you have watched all the videos in this playlist, be sure to check out this link after finishing this tutorial. Before we proceed, a quick note. All the hands-on exercises are done using Snowflake's free trial version hosted on AWS with the Enterprise Edition. I recommend watching this video in 4K resolution. And if you are a fast learner, consider speeding up the video to 1.25x or 1.5x. If you want to take your Snowflake learning to the next level, check out my Udemy courses. Feel free to contact me on Instagram. And yes, if you would like to stay updated on Snowflake's new and popular features, end-to-end -end data engineering projects, architectural concepts, live demo videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Data Engineering Simplified. So, let's jump to our Snow site web UI to start our learning journey. So here, I'm in my Snow site web UI and this is my projects menu followed by notebooks sub menu. Now, let's click on this plus icon to create a notebook. So, I have given a name to the notebook. This is my database and this is my schema and this notebook is going to use Compute Virtual Warehouse. So it has created three sample cells. Let me quickly delete and also change the parameter what we have learned in our first video to save the cost. So let's close the sidebar. So idle timeout set to 15 minutes. It is done. Looks good. I am creating my first SQL cell, changing the name to introduction. So as soon as I press run, my notebook is starting and it will use the virtual warehouse. Let's wait for a while. So since it is SQL and I have written a markdown, I need to change it to the markdown. Let's create another SQL cell. So first I'm going to use orders table and from the triple dot, I will copy the name. Let me shrink this. So if you see, I have order priority and I would like to run a group by clause with this order priority. Let me change the cell name. So whenever a cell is edited and it is either SQL or Python, it means that the cell is modified but not yet executed. Once I execute, it will change the color to green if it gets executed successfully. And if it doesn't get, then it will change to red. Let's try that out. So if you see, this got changed to green. It means the cell executed successfully and this is a SQL type. And if I click on here, I can see it has used Compute Virtual Warehouse and this is my query ID and I can go and check the query profile. If I have to convert this SQL result into a pandas, let's see how I can do that. For that, I'm going to create another Python cell and choose a name. So the moment I start typing this word order, it has brought this order priority data as a variable. And if you see this extension, it says this is a built-in Snowflake SQL cell result. Okay, very interesting thing. So I can really select this and then say to pandas. Now let's run it. And I can see the result. So this is the name of the cell which is being referred here because this cell is treated as a variable. So now you don't have to recompute this query again and again and again. And through this two pandas reference, you would be able to convert the result of a SQL into a pandas data frame. Now, why would I do that? 
is there might be many reason let's say i have to reorder it or i have to apply a filter why should i go and make the modification and i can do it that way let me write a sort function or filtered function and bring the result so opening another python and just copying this result Now let's run it. So I can see a sorted result of a data frame. Now let's apply a filter and see how the filter works. So I am trying to narrow down my result and only interested in urgent orders and high orders. And let's see how the result comes. Okay, so I got a filtered result. So this is the feature of referencing a cell result and doing the post processing after you get the result. So this way you can save a lot of compute cost. Now let's go back to our query history and check whether these operations are recorded in query history or not. So if I click here, I will not have any query history. And likewise, if I click here, I will not have any query history. So let's open a new tab and see how the query history looks like. So this is my execute notebook, which is still running. And if I see many alter statement available here, however, I am not able to see any execution in my query history, which I did it through my pandas data frame. Now, how can I create a slope path data frame by referring SQL cell result? So I have created a new variable called slope path underscore df. And again, I can refer a order priority data cell as this. And if I hover this, it is primarily my Snowflake SQL cell result. And then I can set to here. It will automatically give me the data frame like this. If I have to perform the same operation, I have to use a different API to get the result. Let me show you. So first, let's change the name and let's run it. So I got the same result. And if I see, I do not have a query history. Let me refresh my query history screen. And it looks like Snowflake internally using result scan to fetch the result to the Python cell. Now let's apply the filter. And I got the same result. So this is how you can run Pandas data frame as well as Slow Park data frame. Now, what happens if your SQL cell is producing multiple result? How can you capture that? Let's try that out. So instead of order priority, I will take order status, which is another column here. And let's run it. So even though I have two SQL, okay, I got the result only from the last SQL. Now, if I want to refer this as a pandas data frame or snow park data frame, which one it will refer? Let's try that out. So it is a multiple result. So if I say M, so it says multiple result dot two. <laughs> Let's run it. So even though I have two queries, this primarily referred the result which is displayed here. Make sure even if you have a multiple outcome in a single cell, only the last outcome will be captured as data frame in your Python cell. Now, let's try another scenario. What if I have a data frame available in my Python cell? Can I refer the result of that cell in another Python cell? So this is my Python cell of type Python and I'm creating a pandas data frame. Let's see the result. So this is employee department data and my DF is already available. Now let's create another Python cell and here. If you refer to this Python cell, it is saying Snowflake Python cell result. And this is the name of the Python cell. And here I can refer it. Okay, so let's try that out. So it says data frame object has no attribute to pandas because I can directly access this data frame to the new Python. There is no point following this approach. 
Yes, if I have to convert the result of a SQL from a cell, it makes sense. However, referring the result of a Python cell to a new Python cell does not make any sense because I can always refer this data frame directly through the variable name. Now, there is another use case I would like to show. If you have a two SQL cell, which is producing two different result and you want to perform a join through the data frame, let's see how we can do that. We run this. Looks good. Let me create another cell. I have this region data. Now I would like to join this two result and produce a new data frame. How can I do that? So let me create a Python cell. So I am performing the merge operation and I am merging these two based on this region key. Let's run it. Okay, so I fixed it. So my result is available. Now I would like to see if this query is recorded in our query history screen or not. Let's go and check. So I can only see result scan. However, I do not see any join operation. If I click on this result and let's see what this result is. So every time I access a data frame through cell reference, I think it runs a result scan. And so this is how you can use the cell reference and create Pandas data frame or Snowpark data frame. And without recomputing, you can use Snowflake's result scan feature to save a lot of time. However, it may save a cost or not, depends on which virtual warehouse you are using. As long as your notebook runs, your virtual warehouse is also running behind the scene, hosting your notebook. Hope you got something valuable from this video. If you did, please hit the like button and this will help others to discover the relevant Snowflake video tutorial. And if you think this can help someone in your team, feel free to share. Thanks for watching and happy learning.